Mass Effect is a space opera with some amazing moments. From the minute the series kicks off, you're in for one hell of a ride with all the companions you get along the way. The stare downs with various reapers, the nail biting missions that see you pitted against the reapers, collectors and Cerberus. But variety is the fruit of life and one of the best aspects of this trilogy is how varied some of the missions are. From endearing missions like the Citadel DLC, exciting ones like the suicide mission in Mass Effect 2, or heartbreaking ones like many of the missions in Mass Effect 3, I want to focus on missions that really, really creeped me out. Hi, this is Rima from Odyssey Gaming, and today I'll be looking at 10 of the creepiest missions in the Mass Effect trilogy. And as with most things, these are personal, so if you have any missions that weirded you out for any reason, let me know in the comments below. And with that, let's get into it. Neveria is one of my favourite missions in Mass Effect in general. The way the mission plays out from exploring the fairly shady business world of the Neveria Development Corporation to eventually leading you to Rift Station where you try to track down Matriarch Benezia. This is where it starts to get unsettling. This is because the station is overrun by the Rachni, those weird shrimp crab monsters that have broken out of containment and are basically running amok around the station. Not only do they have a tendency to just pop out of nowhere, making walking around the station very, very tense, but their queen can also remotely control individuals, including those who are dead, to talk in this really, really horrifying voice. And if that isn't all anxiety inducing, it takes the final run of Rift Station where you see a man getting impaled and your motion tracker lighting up like a Christmas tree with the amount of Rachni soldiers presumably surrounding you to eat you. Sanctuary isn't inherently scary, but it is very unsettling. It was originally set up as a refuge for those displaced by the Reaper War, taking in countless people. However, it becomes very apparent that Sanctuary is actually a front for a Cerberus operation, led by Miranda Lawson's father, who is studying Reaper indoctrination. This saw most of the refugees being transformed into husks. The entire mission is very tense and unnerving, and it's all set to the backdrop of an increasing number of atrocities in the name of the Reaper War. The Abandoned Mine is a very small side mission in Mass Effect 2 and can be easily missed. Kinda wish I had. There are two things I really really find terrifying in Mass Effect, one being the Banshees, which I'm sure I have in common with most Mass Effect fans, and of course, husks. Because husks for the most part can be harmless, they don't take a lot to be taken down, but husks never come in singles, it normally involves a horde and a lot of disturbing moaning and howling. Take for example the Abandoned Mine. To get this mission, you have to get a star chart from the Barrier Frontier store on Ilium, which can lead you to a planet called Aquatus. When you land, it doesn't take very long to start getting overrun by husks, and overrun is an understatement. There are actually a lot. Coupled with a Reaper artifact and logs that show a very slow indoctrination of workers who worked in the mine, you'll be like me, wishing you had never landed on this planet. Collecting the Reaper IFF from the Derelict Reaper is similar to the Abandoned Mine from the previous entry, but just way, way more intense. There are husk hordes, several scions who lumber and moan at you, and the atmosphere itself adds to the level of creepiness. For one, you're in an abandoned Reaper, with video and audio logs documenting the worsening state of the team stationed there. There is also the Dragon Teeth, which give you PTSD of Eden Prime from Mass Effect 1, and then there is the soundtrack, which is this just very low murmur of faint creaks and mechanical noises that builds the deeper you explore, cultivating in Legion score as you arrive at the core. Many of Mass Effect 1's missions are absolute treasures, and as we've already discussed, can delve into a realm of weirdness. However, the weirdness really started to creep me out when we got to Feros. It started fairly normally, with a colony in a rundown area, but then you get the Thorian Creepers and the Thorian itself, or Species 37 as Exogeny call it. With their tendril-like fingers, lack of eyes, and of course, the noises they make, the Thorian Creepers are designed to be nightmare for you all. And then you have the Thorian itself, a massive plant-based creature that can create clones of individuals like the one of Asari Shayala. 
The Omega DLC is endearing for several reasons. For one, you get to spend an extended amount of time with fan favourite Arya Talok. You then get to revisit Omega and you get to experience a storyline separate from the Reaper War and more localised, much like in Mass Effect 2. But the part I loved the most, other than Nyrene Candras of course, were the adjutants. They fully freaked me out, especially when you first properly encounter them in the dark creeping atmosphere that is the processing plant, which is full of odd noises and of course strewn with the dead corpses of Cerberus soldiers who have seemingly been slaughtered. With a clear inspiration from H.P. Lovecraft's Call of Cthulhu, it should be expected that the Leviathan DLC from Mass Effect 3 would be unsettling and unnerving. There are several points in the DLC that are odd, when you see Dr. Bryson getting killed by his assistant, the descent into the abyss and the chat with Leviathan itself. But the moment I love and equally am creeped out by the most is a visit to TGES Mineral Works in search of Dr. Garneau. For one, the fact that all the workers are clearly under the influence of some form of indoctrination just adds to the Lovecraftian element of the situation, almost mirroring the quote-unquote people of the village who heavily feature in Lovecraft stories. And when you finally encounter Dr. Garneau, there is a jump scare that still sometimes gets me to this day. The concept of a collector ship is just scary to begin with, a massive ship it kidnaps people and murders countless humans for nefarious reasons, but when you step onto the collector ship initially in Mass Effect 2, it's eerily quiet. We find a pile of corpses, we feel the emptiness of the area, and the overwhelming thought of the idea of harvesting the entirety of Earth. When we finally realise it's a trap, the tension just ranks up and it gets more and more anxiety inducing with waves of collectors and hordes of husks as we try to escape to Normandy. What can I say about Project Overlord? From the onset of the mission, it's truly one of the most creepy missions I've played in Mass Effect. With the mission being set during the day, you have a false sense of security, but then you get the quote unquote rogue AI trying to communicate to you with barely audible help me's and make it stops that act as jump scares, especially accompanied with that scary synthetic face that just pops out at random points of the mission. As you reveal the truth behind Project Overlord, the scariness turns to sadness and sympathy, but the DLC is still unnerving to this day, especially knowing what David had to endure. I'm sure many of you could guess that this was going to be number one in my list, as a banshee is one of the most horrifying icons in Mass Effect, and maybe one of the creepiest kind of characters in gaming in general. Created by the Reapers by transforming the already potentially murderous Ardat Yakshi into a terrifying hybrid, they are powerful biotics that are equipped with long talons and that could teleport towards you. I always get a shiver every time I hear that scream, including in multiplayer. And rightfully named, the Banshee are a signal for death, and I think are one of the most dangerous Reaper enemy types. This mission has you exploring a monastery that was designed to harbour Ardat Yakshi who are trying to stay away from society but all you find are banshees that have overrun the place and screams that echo into the darkness. So those are my 10 scariest or creepiest missions in the Mass Effect trilogy and most of these missions still unsettle me to this day even after all my playthroughs. But what about you guys? Are there any missions that really kind of freak you out? Let me know in the comments below and tell me why because I'm sure I can just add more to my list. If you like this video please like it and subscribe and please share this video to help the channel grow. I hope you enjoyed it and were as unsettled as I was and I will see you next time.